Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where we try to uncover things about real estate that you never do because none of us ever saw it coming either. And today's guest is a wonderful realtor by the name of Belinda Fulton. Belinda, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, Lee. So do us all a favor and tell everybody what market you're located in, how long you've been in real estate, anything that particularly is relevant that people would want to know. Okay. Well, I got started in 1994, so I'm in my 25th year in practice. Um, I'm in the Cleveland area market, which is an interesting market because you could cross the border from one municipality to another, and it's a completely different price range. So it's it's been a lot of fun. I also uh, lecture in real estate law and uh, pre-licensed education. Oh, so you get to see all angles of the business. Yes, yes, I do. So being your silver anniversary year, congratulations, by the way. They should give us some extra jewelry for that, shouldn't they? Right. Well, I have a (laughs) heart-shaped realtor pin. No, we do love those. (laughs) All right. So there's only two ground rules for my podcast. And if you're a subscriber, you already know that I don't want any real names used. So if there's a guilty party, just make up a name for them. And I don't mind salty language, as pretty much everybody knows about me. But I don't like F-bombs, GDs, or see you next Tuesday, because that's just too far for me. So with that being said, Belinda, (laughs) tell us what you've got to tell us today. See you next Tuesday. I love it. (laughs) You've never heard that before? See, what cracks me up is like my Southern friends are usually, they all know what the euphemism is. And everybody else takes them a second. And they're like, oh. I'm like, I know, because it's an ugly word. It's too ugly. Oh, that was just hilarious. I'm you sorry, can use that all day long. It's all yours. <laughs> See, now I threw you off. Perfect timing for your storytelling. So you said you've got a cautionary tale for people. I absolutely do. It's a life lesson of why you should never give title to your boyfriend or girlfriend. So I don't know if you have short sales in your area, but when they happen in my area, which is when the bank lets somebody... Uh, sell their property for less than what they owe on it, um, foreclosure could be happening at the same time. So Mm -hmm. one day I get a call from the bank. He's got this fellow that's going through foreclosure. He needs to sell the house that he was attempting to flip. So I take the listing and then I see the listing. And that house had more issues than Playboy. It was in the phase of pre-construction, deconstruction, reconstruction. And he was alone on his mortgage, but he had a longtime girlfriend. So he decided one day to give her half of his title. So now I'm listing a house that I'm trying to sell at short sale. It's now owned by a man and his longtime girlfriend. Right up until he meets the love of his life on the internet and he goes to (laughs) California to be with her. Leaving behind jilted girlfriend who gets married on the rebound. So wait, 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 wait. So where are we in the short sale at this time? Did he bust off and get married during the short sale process? Uh no. Well, yeah, she did. <laughs> so, so if you're a, I, if you're a consumer listening to this, let me give you a little bit of uh, understanding real quick about why this is absolutely even more insane than it sounds like on the surface. A short sale when you're selling a house for less than you owe on it. It's just a shortfall of money. There ain't nothing else short about it because the banks take forever to make decisions on these things and you never know what kind of paperwork is coming down the pike. So they're a pain in the tail even for normal married people in a normal house that doesn't have construction issues. So with that being said, you have to understand why this is like crazy plus two. Okay, so, so, so now in the I process, get a he's, he's gone and the new girl, the old girlfriend has a new husband. And then you get a buyer. (laughs) I I get a buyer. And he's making what I think is a really good offer. I'm expecting the bank to approve it. The bank is expecting to improve it. So now the title company is examining the title and I get the phone call from the title company. There's a new lien and we can't approve the short sale until that lien gets paid. It's an IRS tax lien, but it doesn't belong to the guy in California. It doesn't even belong to jilted girlfriend, holy dower, Batman. It belonged to her new husband. And now all three of them were defendants in the same foreclosure action. 
And so ultimately so, foreclosure won the race. So the subtitle of this is not just don't give half a house to your boyfriend or girlfriend, but also maybe don't marry somebody you met on the internet a month ago. Oh no, he didn't get married, she did. That's what I mean. She married she married somebody she only met for a month, though, right online? Right. Oh no, it was mm-hmm. good. Whew. So the house went to foreclosure. Would you say it was mainly caused by the jilted girlfriend's new husband? Yes, it was a lien that belonged to him but because he had inchoate dower, which is Ohio's a dower state. So what's hers is his, what's his is hers. Which, by the way, if you're a realtor in another state listening, you should probably make sure that you know all of these ins and outs of title work. In fact, these are actually kind of fun stories to take to your favorite real estate instructor or your favorite real estate attorney or even your real estate commission and say, hey, this is what happened to Belinda in Ohio. What would be the outcome in North Carolina or Texas or Utah? Because you'll be fascinated to know how many different ways this stuff plays out. Yeah. Yeah. So there was, yeah. All three of them carry the stain of foreclosure and the house ended up uh, being boarded up for about 10 years. Oh, so it even looked haunted then. Yeah. Haunted by a failed love. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what happened to it then? Did, you, did somebody finally buy it and fix it up? I don't see that it's fixed up. I see it still still looks the same. The bank seems to be holding on to some of the inventory here, so I'm not sure why they're doing that. I think we're going to see a change in that soon. I know the banks held on to a lot of inventory, hoping that the markets would come back so much they would have great gains to show their stockholders. But as the market hits its quietening moment, which we're seeing all over the country, I bet they're going to start cutting loose with some of that inventory soon. They're going to have to. I mean, some of it has caused blight in certain neighborhoods, urban blight. You have so many of them that are just boarded up and neglected. And, you know, sometimes you get somebody that'll park their car in, in the driveway of the vacant house just so it looks like somebody lives there. But Which is, that's a smart neighborly move to do that for sure. Right. I do think that's one of the, the saddest things about losing the small local and regional banks that in the past, like when you were in the business in your early days, you could have called the local banker and said, let me help you not cause blight with this house. But now that we're seeing hedge funds buying real estate and we're seeing these giant mega banks with no relationship to the community, even if you as a realtor wanted to call and ask about that house, it would be a miracle if you got a person on the phone that knew what you're talking about. Oh, I know. None of the departments communicate with each other. It's one of those Mm -hmm. frustrating things about a short sale is nobody shares the paperwork. So, Which, you know, honestly, it's a good reason that, as you know this as an instructor, realtors, if you're going to handle short sales, you need to get educated right now before you're ever presented with one so that you know how to properly handle it or make a relationship in your market with somebody like Belinda who knows how to handle it and then place that client in the hands of a professional who understands that particular market segment. And if you're a consumer and you're having financial trouble, there are tons of us out there that we do not judge. We know this stuff goes on and we know how to help you through it. Not every realtor does. So it's great questions to ask before you take the plunge because your financial future is really on the line with these kind of situations. And your ability to get a mortgage for at least a couple of years. That's our rent to own market right now. Oh, yes. Will be for some time. Yeah. So, Belinda, the last thing I want to ask you before I let you off this episode is, as somebody who instructs free licensing education, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to somebody who's considering getting into real estate or is a brand new licensee? What's the, what do you think they should be paying attention to for success? Absolutely learn the lessons of agency relationships. Um, know what kind of financial animals you have available to your, to your buyers. Um, definitely take advantage of your broker's onboarding training. Um, that's probably some of the most important stuff to them out there. And, and you know, rely on your, your realtor community. I mean, you know, there's so many things you can get on, on realtor.org. And in every state, there's a specific site where they could get scripts and things and learn how to talk the language and prepare themselves. So we have them for 120 hours of pre-licensing in Ohio. So that's a lot of time we get to talk to them about all kinds of things uh, related to real estate. Well, that's actually, you're the first person I've heard say the number one thing a new licensee should focus on is understanding agency relationships. But if you look at where realtors go wrong and get in trouble with the law, with liability, it typically goes back to agency. That's fantastic advice. Thanks. It's important advice because most of our disciplinary actions 
our mistakes in the relationship, our behaviors. Right. And a lot of Getting times, I don't think Getting the combination to a lockbox. Right there yeah. is a big breach of a duty. And I don't think they do it maliciously or hatefully. It's just a lack of understanding how things are supposed to work. Right. I try to put myself in the position of the seller if it were my house. How would mm -hmm. I want it treated? So, and if I were the buyer, how would I want it to be treated? All right. So, Belinda, if anybody is seeking a really knowledgeable professional realtor in your area. In fact, I bet you know people throughout Ohio. How could they reach you for information or help with their real estate needs? I can be reached at belinda.fulton at me.com. And all of Belinda's contact information, including her lovely head, will be in the show notes for this episode in case you are unable to take note while you're writing. But always think about things before you pull the trigger. And you know what? If you are thinking about selling a house, maybe call your realtor before you give half of it to the girlfriend. Wouldn't you say, Belinda, they should just call us about everything? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're a realtor, broker, investor, inspector, lender, or a regular normal person with your own story to tell about something absolutely crazy in real estate, give me a shout at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the networks, and we'd love to feature you in a future episode. So subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com, where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more. 